Mm, 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 mm. Oh, wow. That is amazing. Um, yeah, this is actually less a, um, a book impression than it is going to be like just kind of a quick uh, cross-cultural uh, book recommendation. Um, I have, pardon me, um, you know, like I don't, I think if I kind of go all in with projects and even though this isn't really a project, it's just like a little dumb th fun thing that I do. I, um, I was, I feeling this pressure to like I make a video for every book I was reading all of a sudden, even though that was never my intent when I started doing these, um, but I read some nonfiction that I thought was interesting and wanted to discuss, but I've been incredibly busy. I just actually finished the first draft of uh, novel number four, which uh, there's still a ton of work ahead of me. I have to basically rewrite all four novels, but um, important milestone. But I was really sinking a lot of time into that, and then I was busy with work and what have you. Um, so I'm just going to go back to my original idea, which is just, you know, no one's really watching these anyway. I'm just going <laughs> to... Uh, if I, you know, if I have the time and I feel like it, I'm going to make uh, book impressions about whatever books I feel like discussing. And um, I am a part of a book group. Uh, we meet uh, the official book group where we actually discuss one book. We meet like once a month. And for that, for this month, we are discussing a book by a very famous German defense attorney named Ferdinand von Schirach. And uh, this was perfect. Like, I've been wanting to practice my German anyway. In Berlin, like, everyone has this idea. I've lived in Berlin for five years, and my German's, like, decent in the sense that I can, like, you know, I could read, like, a book or whatever, or read a newspaper article and discuss it, but I never speak German. Never. Like, uh, it's actually, I probably speak as much German here as I would if I were living in St. Louis and taking, like, a German lesson once a week or something. Um... Actually, if I were taking a German lesson once a week, I'd be speaking German more in St. Louis. I mean, it's just that, like, uh, that's, <laughs> you move in international circles, English is the lingua franca. There are huge sections of Berlin where, like, you can go into a restaurant and not even the waiter will speak German. Anyway, um, we were talking about the book Verbrechen, which you can see I got from the library. Um, I went ahead, okay, it takes me, like, three times or four times as long to read a book just in German than it does in English. Um, mostly because I get like really, um, I'm super, I want to be super chill about like not knowing words and not totally getting the sentence, um, you know, uh, in, in which case like I could just, I could just read through it or whatever, but I often find myself like stopping and looking up words and doing this, that and the other, or like, um, kind of sounding them out in my head. I mean, I do that anyway, when I'm reading in English, I do the sub vocalization. I actually enjoy it, but, um, sub vocalization in German takes so much more time. So I decided that I was going to, I read, um, I looked it up. There's a, um, there's an English language translation. So I read it first in English and then at my normal reading speed. And then I read this in German and having read it in English, I had no problem reading it in my normal reading speed because it was like, oh, you know, like, oh, this is beautiful. Like, this is really interesting, really interesting, really interesting. Turn the page. Don't quite get what's going on. The sentence is, uh, there are a couple of words in the sentence I don't quite understand, but like, I just continue reading because I remembered what the, you know, like I could totally understand knowing all of the context ahead of time, what I was reading. I would just continue reading, you know. But anyway, all that is to say that this book, which uh, was just a, you know, a resounding success in the German book market. I mean, apparently it spent like, I don't know how many weeks on the Der Spiegel, like bestseller list. Um... It is, I would like for it to find a wider audience in the English-speaking world. It is absolutely excellent. <clears throat> this German defense attorney, what he did was he wrote a collection of short stories based on uh, his case, like the cases he had actually worked. Um, and they are incredible. A lot of times, you know, I hear this like uh, here and there actually just... I have like a weekly book group where we just kind of get together and we like, you know, sit in the park or sit in the cafe and uh, hang out and read for an hour and talk about whatever we're reading. It's like kind of an open book group. We're not talking around about a single. It's not one of those book groups where you read a book and talk about a book. Um, and somebody asked this and I've seen this like just in online. Everyone's like, oh, it's isn't that unethical? Blah, 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 blah. There's this radical misconception that if you're a lawyer or a psychologist or a doctor, you're like never able to like 
under any circumstances discuss anything having to do with your work, and that's a it's just a not true in the slightest. Like basically, the ethics prevents you from revealing identifying information like the person's name or whatever, revealing uh, details that are that a person can like you, you, like the. You can write a book like this, but the reader shouldn't be able to correctly infer the identity of the person being discussed, essentially. That's how doctors discuss their cases. <laughs> and that's how, you know, psychologists will write scholarly journal articles with case studies, you know. Um, but there is definitely a fictional quality to this work. Like, I, I mean, it's, it's clear that... Um, I interpreted the, the individual stories as sort of the way I would if I were watching a film based on a true story. You know, like there's, um, the stories are fantastic. I mean, they're like, well, fantastic in terms of the quality, but they're just fantastical in some ways. They're wild. They're crazy, you know, like, um, and I had to ask myself if he was dramatizing them a little bit. And certainly he was in the sense of like supplying like these very vivid details, which clearly he couldn't have known, you know. But um, I think that probably like in, you know, the meat of the stories are essentially true, at least emotionally, you know, uh, from his perspective. There is like, I mean, the, the, the cases are, if you're, if you're, you know, I'm a true crime junkie. I'm a crime junkie, you know. I don't like... I'll tell you what, like, I'm, I wish we lived in a world where no one was ever murdered, but it's entertaining. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, you know, like, I'm like, ooh, I'm at the edge of my seat, like, what? He did what? You know? <laughs> um, but uh, if you are somebody who likes reading crime fiction, if you are somebody, certainly if you're somebody who likes true crime, like, and you're in English, this is called Verbrechen in German. English translation, crime. It's actually, I looked it up, um, not trying to steer you towards Amazon or whatever, but it's just, I think it's like $6 on the Kindle version. It's like 6 bucks, you know? Um, it actually, there's a paperback version, which in English includes this, as well as his second collection of stored stories. He has another one coming out, or maybe it did come out. It's like essentially supposed to be a trilogy. It was envisioned as a trilogy, and um, the second one's called Guilt. Um, so I think there is a paperback version available in English, which includes both crime and guilt. I've only read crime. Um, and the stories are just incredible. Like in one of the story, I mean, in one of the stories, I, this is, I'll be very careful not to avoid spoilers. Uh, and so these aren't spoilers. Um, but they're, uh, these are the setups. Like in one of the stories I really loved, like it's the second, the first one was like, that's the thing. The first one I, I enjoyed, it was interesting. Um, it was maybe my least favorite of the collection, but, uh, or one of my, uh, you know, definitely not a favorite. Um, but the second story, it just really picked up, pick, you know, like just really picked up for me. It involves like a bunch of um, essentially like ordinary, like kind of street thugs, late teens. They wind up. <coughs> um, getting a tip from this Japanese, the secretary of this Japanese business uh, businessman or this employee of this Japanese businessman that he's going to be out of town and he has a safe with a lot of money in it and valuables or whatever. They go and wind up like stealing the safe. But, you know, like the guy is like clearly, the, the word Yakuza is not mentioned, but like clearly he has some sort of underworld connections. And unbeknownst to them, they make off with this priceless artifact. Um, and it is just insane. I mean, like, insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. <laughs> no, like, it, it was just wild. Um, there's another story. Like, I mean, there's just a... Um, I mean, there's a story about, like, this, this farm boy who is um, clearly disturbed. His, he's been going around, like, mutilating other farmers' sheep, and his father has just been, like, you know, essentially buying off the farmers, they'll bring their sheep and he'll just pay them like double or triple the price of the sheep and then they'll just kind of keep it hush hush until one day he's suspected in the disappearance of a 16 year old girl. Um, and there's a cloud of suspicion. There's like, I, there's just so many, so many great stories in this collection. There's like um, a, a bunch of neo Nazis who are like a little bit drunk and like in a bad mood decide to sort of um, menace and kind of terrorize this 
nebbish looking, bookish looking, middle aged accountant type looking guy who's just minding his own business. And appearances can be deceiving and basically you know, is he or you like is he or is he not like an international contract killer? <laughs> you know, like um, there is a there's this great story where like this industrialist is suspected in the murder of a prostitute, and um, Ferdinand von Schirach saves this guy because he just he finds like this compelling evidence, like definitively establishing uh, that that appear to exonerate his client um, and then there's like a trick at the end and you as a reader have to like kind of um, you have to ask yourself like does it really exonerate his, his client you know there's just a lot of um, I mean there's a moving story about a, a German guy who um, who robs a bank desperately trying to get the money he needs to go to Ethiopia which is the only place on earth he's ever felt at home these are stories that are like I mean they're um, I, they vary they're like they, they deal with uh, some clients are clearly innocent some clients are clearly guilty um, they're kind of what I like about it is it's a an examination of uh, the interaction between like really always messy, sometimes disturbed, sometimes, you know, often very relatable um, people and their messy circumstances and how that kind of, um, how you have to, tr how, how, how that interacts with something that's as comparatively precise as the law, you know, and how um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just sort of the intersection of those, like the precise law written down uh, and how that is applied to people's messy lives, you know. Um, there's a lot of heartbreak here. Um, it's a very, you know, the, the stories um, are very different from one another in terms of, I mean, there's the styles obviously the same, and there's a, um, there are like thematic threads throughout the work. But, um, you know, there are some where it's just like, ooh, like you're kind of, you're gripped by it the way you would be by, you know, the Godfather or, or whatever, you know, like that kind of like, oh, you know, like that watching some sort of underworld machinations can be kind of interesting. And then there is just, just pure heartbreak and, you know, um, happy resolutions, not so happy resolutions. You know, it's a really engrossing work and I'd highly recommend it. Anyway, that's all I got for this for you this morning. Um, I'll do another video one of these days, I'm sure. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Take care.